In 1791, the First Amendment was added to the brand new U.S. Constitution, which said, among other things, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. For 200 plus years since that amendment was passed, Americans have argued about exactly what was prohibited and exactly what was allowed. But in the first 50 years of the country's life, the notion of a free exercise of religion led to all sorts of very interesting and powerful religious experiments and new ideas in religion within the new United States of America. I want to explore two of these fascinating experiments, two religious, utopian religious communities that were born out of the energy of evangelical religion and religious freedom that exist in the United States, especially between the time of the American Revolution and the American Civil War. The first of these is a group called the Shakers. People today, if they've heard of the Shakers, often think of the group because of the beautiful uh, furniture and baskets that the Shakers make. And Mildred Barker, who was uh, one of the Shakers at Sabbath Day Lake, Maine, said in the 1990s, I almost expect to be remembered as a chair or a table. The Shakers were much more than builders of beautiful furniture, though they certainly were that. Shakers were founded by a woman named Mother Anne Lee, who was born in England in 1736. Um, Ann Lee had a powerful religious experience that led her to believe that religion could be much more beautiful, much more powerful, and much more personal than the official religion of her day. She believed it so strongly that she and some of her followers went around disrupting religious services in England, uh, for which she landed in jail. It was not, not acceptable to go around uh, inter stopping the religious service and asking everybody to come over to her side of the issue. As a result of that, in 1774, Ann Lee moved to the United States and began to found small religious communities, she called them families, of her followers. Under Ann Lee's leadership, the Shakers developed a number of beliefs and practices that set them apart from most other religious groups. They were pacifists and refused to fight in any war. In fact, Ann Lee was briefly jailed in the United States because uh, she wouldn't support the American Revolution. She simply wouldn't support any war. They also, Shakers also believed that marriage or any sexual relationship was inherently sinful. And they demanded celibacy of all their members. This meant, among other things, that nobody was born into a Shaker community and all of their membership had to come from converts. And it certainly limited the number of people who were interested in converting to the Shaker lifestyle. Shakers didn't believe in any private property. Each Shaker community or family, though the community could be prosperous, it was the community that owned everything and no individual owned anything within that. Shaker's most interesting theological belief was that since Jesus was a man, eventually there had to be a female Messiah before the world could be set right and that Anne Lee was that second coming of Jesus in a female form. And in Shaker worship was very active with dancing and singing and moving. As one observer called, they were shaking, singing, hopping, turning, running, laughing. Hence their name, Shakers. In spite of their strict rules, the evident joy did mean that there were many converts to the Shaker communities, and there were several hundred members scattered around New York, New England, and parts of the Midwest in the 1800s. Shakers declined dramatically in the 20th century in a more secular age. In the 1960s, however, um, Partly because of the social turmoil and perhaps some of the hippie movement of the days, the Shaker community of Sabbath Day Lake admitted new members, and Shakers in the 21st century are still going strong in that one community. The second community I want to talk about is the Oneida community, which flourished in Oneida, New York between 1848 and 1879. It was similar to the Shakers in some ways and very different in others. John Humphrey Noyce, who was the founder of Oneida, was born in Brattleboro, Vermont in 1811. He studied to be a Congregational minister, but he broke with the Congregationalists and all of the established religious groups because of some theological ideas that he developed. He believed that Christians really could stop sinning, that they could become perfect, and that once a person had become perfect, the traditional moral laws no longer applied to that person. Where the Shakers were celibate, in Noyce's, Noyce community, everyone was free to have sexual relations with everyone else. He wrote, in a holy community, there is no more reason why sexual intercourse should be restrained by law than why eating and drinking should be, and there is as little reason for shame in the one case as in the other. 
For noise, the sin was in jealousy, possessiveness, in exclusive relationships, not in sharing. In 1848, Noyce and a group of followers established their own religious community in upstate New York at Oneida, and the Oneida community grew and prospered. There were certainly lots of sexual relationships at Oneida, though it is interesting they were almost they were all heterosexual as far as we know there were no homosexual relationships. Uh, like the Shakers, uh, members of the Oneida community owned everything in common. There was no private property in people or in things. At Oneida, the community began to support itself by making silver spoons, which were ri widely popular across the United States. And while the group prospered for a time, by the 1870s, the New York State Legislature began to get more and more tough about their sexual practices. And eventually, in 1879, the group abandoned, uh, disbanded rather than risk going to jail because they didn't fit the traditional sexual mores of Victorian America. As they disbanded, each member was given shares in the, sil in the silver spoon business, which became the Oneida silverware business, which is still very much going today. I tell these two stories because they're examples, and there could be hundreds of others, of the way Americans ex embraced religious freedom and their freedom to express religion in many different ways. There was the New Harmony community in Indiana. It was perhaps most famous of all the Mormons who began in Illinois and moved on to Utah. American religious expression flourished out of this separation of church and state and this freedom that people were given in this country to explore religious enthusiasm wherever it took them.